Cryptography allows us as security managers to ensure that our users' data is protected to a reasonable degree. Only those with the proper authorization and decryption key can open and view the contents of the information being developed or sent across the network. Howdy, I'm Eric, and in this one, we're going to be going over some of the key fundamentals of cryptography. Now, before we get too far into this, don't worry. We're not going to be going so far into cryptography that we need to bust out some calculators here. That's not the point of this. We're just going to be going into the overview of cryptography and what it means to us as security managers to be able to implement and provide that security for our users and organizations data. We need to be able to make reasonable decisions as to what kind of encryption or cryptography we need to implement in different situations or scenarios to ensure that that reasonable expectation of confidentiality is met. Now, when I talk about confidentiality, we're obviously referring back to the CIA triad, where we have three pillars of overall security that is supposed to be uh, available to all the users. And if we take a look at the overall triad itself, it's made up of three major components, integrity, confidentiality, and availability. Now for integrity, we're just ensuring that the data is correct. And we covered a lot of how this is done in the previous domain. For example, hashing. Hashing allows us as security managers to be able to verify that a file or the contents of that file are the same as when they were first generated to when it was being viewed by somebody else. That file signature, if it's changed in any way, shape, or form, will tell us if any changes have been made to the overall file itself. And we know that the integrity has been compromised if that file signature is changed. Now, just as a quick example of integrity and how us as security managers can make sure that nothing has been tampered with from start to finish. If we go on uh, download sites today, kind of like uh, GitHub, for example, you'll see that a lot of the files on there have hash signatures, whether they be an MD5 or SHA, uh, SHA-1, SHA-256, whichever SHA that they use. And so that's the signature of that file as it sits on that site. And after you download it, if you check the hash and that signature is still the same as what's listed on the site, then you know, as security managers, that that file has not been tampered with in any way, shape, or form during its transit. And so we can say that for sure, nothing about that file has changed. And we use that on our enterprise networks as well, too, especially when we use data servers to ensure that proprietary information stays true within our organization. Now, not all files are gonna stay the exact same the entire time, but we can also go and make sure that some system files, some proprietary files like uh, documentation that we use for setup and uh, shutdown procedures, those should not be tampered with as much. And as security managers, we can update our hash listing to verify that that integrity portion of the CIA triad has been kept. Confidentiality is what we're going to primarily be covering in this domain. And confidentiality is, in its simplest form, cryptology. And that's ensuring that the information that we have within those files are private or private to those outside the organization. There are going to be those of us within the organization that need to have a proper need to know for that information that's being contained. And the way that we ensure that that confidentiality is maintained is by using cryptology or encryption. And the previous two pillars lead directly into the third one, which by the end of this course, will have full availability of all information and resources within the organization. And it's our responsibility as security managers to ensure that the confidentiality and the integrity is kept to make sure that availability is true. So that way we don't have to worry about users second guessing the information that they're getting or sending to other people within the organization. Throughout this skill, we're gonna be covering some of the different basic aspects of what goes into cryptology and the encryption that is used to make sure that those files are kept confidential. We're gonna be talking about synchronous and asynchronous encryption keys, uh, some of the comparisons, how they process, uh, what it takes to be able to process that kind of information because there are some encryption methods that are real easy to process. And by that, I mean, it's easier on the system that is generating that key. Uh, we're going to be going into how some of these are actually applied in real time. So as security managers, we'll be able to look at a system like an exchange uh, server 
for email. That primarily uses PKI in most enterprise level organizations. And there's encryption that goes behind that PKI along with integrity and file hashing. Now, the file hashing we've talked about before for that, and that's the file signature. Uh, you might know that as the actual signature file that you use with your CAC. But the confidentiality part is what we're going to be diving into and how some e email systems use this encryption or some email systems use this encryption or maybe even none of the above for whatever reason and they use something that is generated through office 365. let's sit back and relax and go through the rest of this domain and understand how this plays a pivotal part in making sure that the cia triad the order of the triad if you will gets its full credit and make sure that us as security managers know that we can take care of every user within the organization I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.